Now entering Nerdist.com. Jackie Cash and Laurie Kill Martin. Jackie Cash and Laurie Kill Martin. It's the Jackie and Laurie Show. The Jackie and Laurie Show. It's the Jackie and Laurie Show. The Jackie and Laurie Show. Let's do this. Wow, chipper. Here we are in the garage. Mm -hmm. Exciting. I've decided to join this gym. Uh, <laughs> in my, in my yeah, garage? Yeah, because you have a rolling machine. You've got a pool that has a paddle board. You've got that bike <laughs> that I could do a thing. You want to try the bike after we pod? Yeah. You can be in full jeans. I don't care. No. I. You do not gonna, have to strip down to anything. I'll strip down to my Spanx. Do it. I, Too it, much info. How's it going awesome. out there? How's, I'm Jackie Cation, by the way. I'm Lori Kim Martin. But I took Have a, you tried it? No, well, I, yeah, I've tried this Has one. Has anyone tried it? I, yeah, I've tried this one. Oh, good. Yeah, my kid can't bend his knee completely. He just started his therapy, so okay. it'll be a while before I get him on the bike. But um, I took a an aqua bike class in Manhattan when yeah. I was there. Oh. Between Montreal, I did a couple days in New York, yeah. Montreal, and then a couple days back. And um, they do they do a, an aqua bike workout at the in, in it's like Tribeca. It's right off the A. It's super okay. easy to get to, right oh, nice. right off Canal. And um, there's like 15 bikes on a little pool at the bottom of a, you know, high rise or whatever. And uh, it was like a 50 minute class. It was really good. Oh, cool. Gave me some ideas for what to do with this one. Right, right. Exactly. Now, because you have the equipment. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's, it's real nice in here. You got you got a treadmill. You got the rowing machine. You got the bike. You got the pool. The treadmill is uh, super old. Right. Like the woman old. who uses it. My mother. <laughs> Your mother. Um, is she using the tread? I would give it away in a second to anyone who wanted it, but she gets, she, you know, does half a mile a all. month and, uh, yeah, barely, but yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and then I know, I, you know what? I just like swimming and I like yoga and I, I don't like doing a machine and yeah. it's like a last resort. So these are, this is like last resort shit. And, right. uh, it's just, I around. actually hate looking at them. Oh, fair enough. <laughs> but you're more than welcome to come over at any time. The rowing machine is kind of beautiful, though. As it's far awesome. As, as far as art goes, it's like all wooden <laughs> and weird. Yeah, because I, I, um, my knees were hurting from running because uh, I'm not a runner and I mm -hmm. shouldn't be running. And I never, my body is not built to run. It's curves and boobs mm -hmm. and it, you shouldn't be pounding on these knees. You know what? You, we were built to have men run for us. <laughs> Oh my God! I had I had to block a guy on Facebook. Nice guy, genuinely nice. Uh, got me on the wrong day, quite honestly. And he, because uh, I've talked to him over the years, and he direct messaged me. He said, "Hey, I was listening to the Horcrux album, yeah, which is a, an album from six years ago, material from six years ago." Yes. And he said, "And uh, there's a joke on it about where you talk about comics being Asperger's victims, and uh, I'm not a victim." And uh, uh oh, and so I'd like you to uh, do something about that. So you should re-record your album. Well, that's uh, what I said. Is I am sorry. Uh, I cannot do anything about a joke that is recorded on an old album. I don't do the joke anymore. But I, I understand if you need to give me a hard pass. <laughs> well, I like how you became Canadian during your apology. You said I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> you really <laughs> tried to apologize. I genuinely. You went tried. all in. I on went that. all in. And then he said. Oh, I just, I, don't, I didn't want people to get angry with you. And I said, so you were protecting me? Condescend much? Uh, is where I snapped. And, okay. uh, and then I said, no one else has complained about it. Just you. So, um, don't, if you, like I said, I wish you the best away from my comedy if you need to go. And Listen. then he wrote me back yeah. and said, if I offended you, period, I'm sorry. My least favorite two sentences in the adult language of English. Because it blames you for being offended. Yes. And if I offended you, and so I wrote back, if, you might want to read a little book called On Apology. It's available <laughs> on Amazon, and it's how to take uh, responsibility for your own uh, thoughts and actions. Dang. Uh, I am now looking for a way to block you on my phone. And then I blocked him. <laughs> well, first of all, Comedy. I might have overreacted. <laughs> you know, no. He. Everyone deserves everything. It's. <laughs> <laughs> that might be the name of this one. Uh, Com comedy doesn't age well. It almost always doesn't age well. It's very. It's very. You know. It, words change. Their meanings change within. 
you know, five years. And, right. you know, I will look at old monologues or monologue jokes I wrote five years ago and I'm like, oh, my God, I'm right. cringing, you know, yeah. and they were jokes that got a great laugh and they wouldn't the work time. now. It's it, comedy reflects what's happening. You know, it doesn't right. and lead it grows the way with the with society, but it follows. Way. Yeah, it doesn't lead. It doesn't. You know? Yeah. And I'll t- uh, the uh, you, you know, the, the Doug Stanhope bit about the word retarded. I don't know the bit, but it's, it's, uh, I'm the sad premise, to lose the word retarded. Well, he said it doesn't matter what you call, because uh, the retarded is, a, uh, retarded is a medical term. You can change it to developmentally disabled. You can change it to whatever you want to call it. But Doug Stanhope goes, you're still not going to take it away from my buddy Joe, because he's still going to call me that. Whatever the new <laughs> word is, my buddy Joe is an asshole, and he's going to call me that. Well, I heard that... Um, like retarded took over for another word that had become the retarded of its day. Right. <laughs> and, and so, so they're always trying to replace it with something more sensitive. Right. And yeah, so that th- people it's just like to call other people syndrome. being shell shock. I mean, the seal George Carlin bit shell shock. Yeah. To post-traumatic stress syndrome. Right. We like to call people chromosomally uh, behind or ahead. That's it. I mean, you have an extra chromosome. We're going to find, even if it's not you, we're going to call our friends who have normal amount of chromosome. (laughs) We're going to say they have an extra one. Well, that's it. That's human nature. It's, uh, well, it's jackass nature, which uh, might be a synonym for human nature Mm -hmm. in, uh, in what you're talking about here. So how was hilarities? It was, well, first of all, I wasn't there. So how would I know? Oh, damn I was there. Go bananas. <laughs> <laughs> I was at Go bananas. There is a funny bone across the river in uh, Newport, Kentucky. Yeah. Because uh, I took my first of all, I took my son, mm-hmm. and uh, it and was a giant pain in the ass. Right. And he's he on crutches. He can't do anything. And you know, now that I'm out of Cincinnati, first the club was great. Yeah. So much fun. Such a great room. Loved it. Loved all the shows. They'll rebook you. Stop talking. No. Anyway, I anyway. know they'll rebook me. So they, they already told me. <laughs> But um, but uh, Cincinnati inns are a little too proud of their zoo and their aquarium because I had a lot of people telling me, oh, it's world class. You got to go to the zoo. And I went. All the bears were hiding. We didn't have a male lion. We had we had two female lions and I had to push my son on a wheelchair. And the whole thing is hills and valleys. I was dead by the end of the zoo trip. I was so tired pushing this hundred pound beast. Right. To see animals that weren't there well you gotta go early you gotta that's the thing about animals right i don't know what's your how do i know when animals sleep well allow me to google that for you (laughs) (laughs) well they all have the same they all have the same nap time yes they're animals i don't know if you know this about dawn and dusk that's when they feed, so that means they're out. So after two Saturday night shows, I'm supposed to get up at dawn the and crack go see. Of dawn, no, sadly, no, we it's went at the end of the day. You're like, please drag this animal out in chains so that I can make my son see a bear. I don't it's like it. Gonna happen. I don't like zoos either, but I was told it was so great. <laughs> it might and I just be an amazing go, zoo. You guys haven't been to other zoos. That's why you think it's great. <laughs> Guess what? Once What's you go to the LA zoo? zoo, oh, the saddest, it's, a, it's the saddest zoo in the world. I saw a monkey that almost tried to kill itself. I looked suicidal, that monkey. It was, uh, this was a sad, sad monkey. But that's it. Every L.A. person wants to. I mean, that's just well, an that's L.A. monkey. <laughs> <laughs> it's in therapy. Of I've been to the L.A. Zoo it's twice. To be a Once on the outside, and it was the saddest zoo ever, and a lot of hills and valleys. And then second time, because I don't know if you know this, but I'm in show business, and uh, I have. I'm to aware, know, Jackie. I know someone in the zoo business, <laughs> and so we got to go behind the scenes at the zoo. First of all, and ride a golf cart, which I recommend. That's how you see the zoo, you guys. At a fucking golf cart and then we also got to feed the hippopotami mm. and the lady who uh, was a friend of my friend of a uh, comic greg fiddler you ever know fid i don't think so anyway uh he um don't set me up like that by the way because no, he's a what if i comic. do know him and he's listening and going oh my god i spent the week with her fid. she doesn't even know if she knew me well he's in sydney australia don't set me up and go do you know this guy all right so uh do you are you familiar with Greg Fleet? Oh my God! <laughs> you know what that oh was? Oh my that God! Was, that was fun. You know what that was? That was fun for me. Okay. <laughs> it's fun to be awful. Is that? I didn't realize that. To be a that. monster. Yes. So um, anyway, we got to feed the hippopotami. Um, the, the zoo lady who showed us around, she was like, "Hey, so you throw essentially a Waldorf salad into the face of a hippopotamus and yeah. they eat it. Uh, apples and cabbage. No, no nuts. Anyway, uh, so." 
uh, she said, don't fall into the hippopotamus cage because uh, you will die. And I can't save you because if I jumped in to save you, I too would die. Hippopotamuses are the meanest. Are they and carnivores? They're, no, they're short. They're short-sighted, and any movement is an enemy. Oh, and they will you, bowl you. They will stomp you to death in a heartbeat. That's how I approach the world. Any movement is an enemy. <laughs> that's that is that true. to me. That's how you should approach your entertainment it's career. A, you are. Um, any of your friends' movement is a is an attack on your career. <laughs> <laughs> I was okay, so I, I we're flying home, right? And my kid has the wheelchair in the airport at uh, Cincinnati. So this guy takes us, and I tip him, and um, I don't know how. It, somehow he found me on Facebook and watched my go and set and watched. Oh my god! And he's and oh, he's a media like he teaches oh, okay. media studies or something, and uh, and he wanted to compare Roseanne to Sam B. Right? You know why one got fired and when why the other didn't. Right. And, I, well, and uh, yes. so I explain I have my an opinion, opinion on that. But I almost always do. Go. But then he goes, um, he just sent me like three paragraphs on Facebook about my Conan set and how it, it talks about female sexuality. And I, I'm like, I don't know that I want to start analyzing my set. Like, I think I'm just going to write back, you know, you can, um, however you view it is fine with me, but I'm really not going to break down my jokes with a stranger on Facebook. Right. It seems weird. It's like, uh, you know, remember when we were ignored and we didn't want to be? Uh, it was it was a beautiful time. When you no mean like w- yesterday? Well, c- I'm currently being ignored, but like all of stand-up comedy. Yes, right, didn't right, used right. To, like nobody was watching sets with a fucking pen in their hand. Oh, I know, right? Oh my god! What happened? <laughs> oh, <laughs> what happened? <laughs> oh well, did okay. So I so first show Saturday in Cincinnati. I do a joke, right? Yeah. Right. So a few minutes later, I do a joke with a callback. A guy in the audience shouts out, call back. Oh, dude. Yes. And then I said, look, you just <laughs> have to, you cannot be analyzing the show during the show. Yeah. And I said, I'm going to paraphrase from a very old uh, offensive rape joke. You just need to lie back and enjoy this. Oh, that is an old offensive rape joke. That's yes. a good one, though. Thank huh? you. I enjoy that one. Uh, you know what would have been nicer is if I would have just laughed. Uh, but uh, <laughs> but if that's the nature of You just did comics. the callback version. I, what um, He did the show just now during the po- I podcast. I did the stand-up comedy version of, hey, that's Analysis. a good joke. Yes, yeah. I know. Just fucking laugh, assholes. You can make your little notes to yourself of what you saw later. What you saw. Okay, I have so many stories to go with that. First of all, Andy Ashcraft is on tomorrow's Dork Forest. He came back from Gen How did Con. you get him? How did I get him? <laughs> uh, it's uh, And I think my Zoom is broken. I need to get a new Zoom because uh, uh, it just keeps clicking and um, it's annoying. Uh, What's so a Zoom? It's, it's for the, the podcast? It, yeah, it's it's the it's the device that you bought. The right, 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 right. Yeah. And it's for the Dork Forest. But he talked about Gen Con, and um, at the end of it, he had a callback. And I said callback. And oh, he said, my God. He's, he had to write a thing. They asked me to do this show at uh, Gen Con. Uh, uh, Comedia, I think is what it's called. And they, they do cosplay. They do sketch. They do... Um, like a nerd debate show, they do a, a literary pop uh, written piece kind mm-hmm. of thing, and then they do a regular stand-up show. Okay. And they asked me if I would do the, and I've done it before, and it was really fun, um, but I wasn't going to Gen Con, so they asked Andy if he would do it. And he write, you know, he's writing all the time, so he's like, okay. And he said that he wrote the piece in my voice, and that it, it was much easier. Oh, interesting. And, uh, it was fascinating. And... Um, the other thing about Gen Con is that he and went Now, is this a, a convention of people named Jen? Yes. It's only people named Jen who want to play board games and, and tabletop pencil games. Okay. Your son would like it a lot. Uh, you would loathe it. Uh, but you would be there for him. <laughs> I just like you... Uh... <laughs> Predicting yeah, I like how I you, feel period. and how I would act. Yes, Maybe I, I would drop him off and not even know about <laughs> it. Uh, but Cards Against Humanity. Have you ever played Cards Against Humanity? Yes. It's it's it's, it's oh not good God. for comics. It's not good for. It's, it's not for comics. It's for no. thirteen to twenty five year old guys people who, who don't do stand. Want to do comedy but never will. Right. It's it's apple. I love apples to apples. I still like apples to apples, and I will always. It's the same. I don't know what you mean. Apples to apples is this is the game mechanic that it's based on, and all it is is it's not. Oh, I see. Cards Against Humanity is middle middle word. Everyone has a handful of obnoxious words. Then somebody says 
pedophilia and everyone laughs and then whatever it right? seems like something gavin mckinnis does on a saturday night but the cards against humanity guys the people who, who make it mm -hmm. essentially use their powers for good in so many ways and and at and at gen con they had a job and they have a gajillion dollars and so they have this big um they're in the dealer room they've got a big uh table set up in a big booth and they're not selling anything all they're doing registering voters in indiana awesome for the entire week oh my god that's great they didn't they didn't sell any cards against humanity they don't need to they're fine and uh <laughs> but they wow. uh yeah and they and they consistently and i was thinking about sort of like because those guys aren't bro -y, you know? Yeah. But they're, they're as they're bro, -y fans are bro -y. as nerds get. Oh, right, right. Sort of like Hardwick, right? Right, right. Like, Hardwick's like a bro -y nerd in the way that he's a cool nerd, right? Mm -hmm. And he always, for the most part, except for being a shitty boyfriend, uh, used his powers for good. Because he would try to be inclusive and he would try to do things and not be a shit, Right. Same I with, don't know. I, I'm, I don't. You don't actually know Hardwick uh, no. very well. You just met him. Just met him at, at a bunch midnight, of places. The one time I did it. it. Yeah. Oh, and that's it really it? Mm -hmm. Okay. And then the other thing is, did you see the Ben Glebe? No. Why do I Clip? know Ben Glebe? He does comedy juice. And oh, yeah. Remember the, does he do college humor? Was that him? He's like, he's one of these guys. He's a, he's a good comic. He's a really good comic. But he also is an amazing businessman. <laughs> It's like, always weird when that goes it's together. It's so weird. I wish to mock openly. Uh, <laughs> but here's the thing about Ben Glebe is that he also has his heart in the right place. Uh, all will be revealed. I'm sure there'll be some some huge reveal about um, Cards Against Humanity. And the PAX guys, the guy who does... Uh, Wait, did Ben Glebe do Cards Against Humanity too? No. Ben Glebe is kind of a... He's like one of these bro -y nerd guys. Mm -hmm. And he had a heckler. He was in Chicago. Yeah. And he had a heckler. This He, he did one Trump joke. I sent you the video. He had one do, Trump do joke. Do you think I click on every link you send me? You're fucking worse than my dad. You were the one who started that fucking thread on on the on the and every. You shouldn't talk about our thread. And let me tell you this: That's, it's, it's everyone who quits that thread. By the way, do they talk to you? It. No, they don't regret it. They email me directly and go, "I can't take it. I hardly post on it. I I just wanted to post spots. That's it. Right. Some people win a little bananas, and then a couple <laughs> people. Oh, so God. anyway, it was it's for female comics who were like if we could trade spots. Basically, yeah. it's if like I have someone... to cancel, and I wanted to be able to say these five female comics are available tonight, so so that I I so they can don't fill it with another with female. Another yeah, yeah, yeah. Straight and also guy. not be um, just an asshole. Just uh, you know, and say I can't do it. Figure it out. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> right. exactly. Right. So then it turned no, no, into I know that. Right. And a lot I don't of even mind. The I mean I turned off notifications so it's yeah at one point there were fifty two like in twenty minutes and yeah. I was like oh this is a terrible idea right uh, and any number of people have left that conversation but it's so but funny. they're missing yeah. out on spot one right. at least one spot a month <laughs> yes anyway um what's the point of my I don't know what's the point of anything <laughs> I'm in a like a post Montreal funk. Like I, I, I worked I, like I was aiming for this gala set and I wanted to, you know, these certain jokes to land and they did. And I'm like, I have nothing to talk about. So now I'm just doing like I'm just going to let there be some silence. there. What? So then I so then I so I'm like, all right, let's just have great shows in Cincinnati and fuck around on stage and have fun. And now I'm back and I'm and uh, like last night I, w I was at Levity Live for the first time. I've never been there before. And um, I don't, you okay. know what? You can keep your little finger comments <laughs> to yourself. I enjoyed it, but I had to follow somebody who was like working really hard. I was like, oh my God. Like I thought I'd be able to, <laughs> wait, please define that. What do you mean? Like they, like they, they, they put like, a lot of effort in? Yes. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. And now I'm like, I want to phone it in. I, no, point? I wanted to fuck around. I was like, let me have oh, a, you were gonna fuck, a fuck around. around. I'm like, it, A, my first time there. B, I'm headlining it. And C, I'm following somebody who's who's quite working good. hard. Yes, and, and, doing and I'm their like, job. all right, okay, well, I'll just start, you know, I'll just do, <laughs> I guess you'll do your job. Is it? I know, I know. It was but annoying. I didn't feel like it. to write new material. So um, that is part of You've your job. You're not making me feel better. Every ad way you come at me makes me feel shame. Well, welcome to my day. And, uh, <laughs> and, so. and, then, and then I was at uh, 
uh, the Laugh Factory, and that I never feel like I can fuck around at the Laugh Factory. You took my spot at the Laugh Factory. Yes, I How did. Was Thank that you. Show? It was it was fun. It was fine. I gave one to you and one to Carousel Tom. That's nice. Yeah. Look at you doling out favors. I know. That's because I had to go stare at my uh, in laws deeply into their eyes. They're both fine, by the way. Thanks for mm -hmm. asking. I did Here's ask. Like, ask no, privately. You I did ask privately, but not today. Oh my God. You know what I'm going to need from you? A little more attention. <laughs> no, a little less. No, it's fine. Here's, but I will tell you, before you tell me how the last, because I do want to know how that went, is uh, th they're doing just fine, uh, or as fine as they can both do with right. uh, with their medical problems. They were feeling good enough uh, day before yesterday that they were bossing me around. They made me clean the house. Like, clean the fucking house. And then I, I had to do a bunch, a load of, and it was hilarious for 45 minutes. And then I called Marie Bamford and I said, it was funny for 45 minutes right now, vaguely irritated, waiting for it to be funny again. And it was. A half an hour later, it was funny again. I don't so, exist in that place. It's, I'm well, just angry all the time. <laughs> well, it's because there's all the, and, and I told both of them, I said, I'm glad you're feeling well enough to boss me around. <laughs> and, uh, um, and then uh, my stepmother-in-law, she was uh, she was talking about her bucket list because mm -hmm. they're both older and they're you know it's it's time and and I said do you have any big anything on your bucket list between Visalia and Exeter California which is an eleven mile, mile stretch of orange trees and she's like no no I got nothing here anyway funnier story in my head how did Laugh Factory go oh my god I know I'm done um, <laughs> <laughs> so oh, it was fine it was fun and then uh, but I, again I felt like you know because you never do it gotta bring it where'd you park. I valeted. Oh, good. Good to hear it. Um, and then... Uh, <laughs> I <need to> know. <laughs> oh, Monday was hot tub. Oh, Monday. Jesus. So you did I, hot tub as well? Wait. So I, we, I get in at like 4 p.m. with, with uh, crutches, McGillicuddy. And so we, <laughs> we lift back here. Then, okay. I have to tell this story carefully. But I went to a, a party for a friend, you know, yes. like a comic friend. And someone was at the party, and I'm just at the party saying hi to people, being friendlier than I want to be. <laughs> right? I've been out. I've, You're doing I kind of want to be under the covers. Yeah. But I'm out because I love my friend who's <laughs> been, been a former a comic delight. of the week. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we're hanging out. And then someone goes, how's your book doing? And I go, um, I think it's doing okay. Like, I, I don't know. I really don't know. And well, you shouldn't. Um, and so uh, she goes, well, uh, I was in Barnes and Noble and I saw it. I go, oh, that's cool. Um, yeah, and I was flipping through it. It looks pretty good. So at this point, I'm I'm like, you brought it up. We're now you're making me talk about it. I go, did you buy it? No. Oh my god. Hey, I don't fucking want to have this conversation in the first place. The like first someone place. else asking me about Conan going to half hour. <laughs> How's everything? Are things going badly for you? Can we talk right. about it? <laughs> right. How worried are you in life? I, uh, yes. Anything else? <laughs> Does your foot still hurt? No, my but foot doesn't. Then another the, uh, another day this week, I was at the pool, right? Yep. I go swimming. Somebody, uh, one of the moms from my son's elementary school, like I did a benefit show, and, yeah. and Carlos Dallas Rocky did it too. Both of our oh, kids nice. go to the same school, and uh, and so she goes, "Hey, I won your book, the dead the dead book, in a raffle." I go, yep. "Oh, okay." Again, I didn't bring it up. I got nope. my goggles on, I got my cap on, I'm ready to jump in and yep. start swimming. She goes, uh, "I haven't read it yet, that title," and I'm like. Okay. Who raised you people? Who are you? <laughs> I go, well, it, you know, people like it. It's not bad. Excuse me. <laughs> Sorry, you people won like something. It. You know, like, it's I didn't a... force that on you. Right. Jesus. I didn't hand it to you and say, please throw this out for me. Yeah. Uh, it was, uh, I really liked it. Uh, let me Thank say, you. and I ordered it for four other people. And I know you did. You're so awesome. I was in Milwaukee and my, did I, t did I have we already talked about this? The Rosemary documentary? A little, I think. Wait off, for off the laugh. Pod. Yeah. Okay. Because wait for the. Wait for your laugh is what it's called. And right. I watched it. My brother Russ made me watch it. It And I loved Rosemary on the Dick Van Dyke show. And um, she was a, a, a comedy writer in an office situation. She wasn't married. She was her own person. And right. she was fucking hilarious. So I watch this documentary, which was uh, my brother recorded off of like me TV rabbit ears. And mm -hmm. um, it is so good. I gotta watch it. Uh, it I, I got one for my dad. I sent him one, because mostly because Rosemary's dad was a dirtbag, mm -hmm. and my father will enjoy the Al Capone, Bugsy Siegel angles of because wow. Rosemary. So get this. So she was a singer from when she was three to f 
to 15, right. 16. And then she started working with Jimmy Durante. She worked with Jimmy Durante. Uh, and then she worked with Phil Silvers. So she was in vaudeville. And then she was, she was in radio. She was in vaudeville. She was in um, movies uh, a little bit, I think, and TV. Mm-hmm. And then um, and her dad was the biggest fucking dirtbag in the world. He was an arsonist for the mob. <laughs> And oh uh, right, and he took all of her money when she was a when was a kid, and never gave her any money. And then she fell in love with a trumpet player, and uh, and oh they came God. out to L. A. and um, and they were married for like twenty years, and then he died, and then she kind of went. She got depressed for like, and then she was in Hollywood Squares for fifteen years. <laughs> and, uh, but it was uh, yeah. You can't pick what gives you life, and it's right. Hollywood Squares. But she You're, opened the Flamingo. Yeah. The first night of the Flamingo ever. In Vegas? In Vegas. Wow. In 1961, I think it was. and um, We could and barely see the Flamingos at the Cincinnati Zoo. That's all that reminded right, me. Right, because they were not out. No. And uh, so, what do you got this week? I'm doing sets in L.A. Yeah, me too. Oh, we're doing a live Jackie and Lori. We're doing a live Jackie tomorrow to- night. Tomorrow, what will be tomorrow night, Tuesday. You know what? I thought I had this coming week off, the week of the 13th. Yeah. Oh, I don't. Oh, you don't. You're working. So uh, I told you this, right? I have to. I'm flying to Phoenix. That's right. And then flying flying back. Day of. Day of. Flying to and back. And uh, so yeah, that's uh, that's eating a lot of profits. But also, I'm doing a little short film. First, we're going to tape it on uh, on Wednesday during the day. And then I said, Oh my God, I realize I'm working. I can't do it. And they said, That's okay. We'll do it afterwards. So it's a 5 p.m. shoot. Whew. So that, that's cool. I, I can do that. And they're like, you know, it goes about 12 hours. Uh, what? The shoot? What the fuck? No. What are I, you can't, d- I can't. I can't. I'm like, I'm going to fall. I'm going to die at 2 a.m. I yeah. can't do it to, uh, because the next day I have to go to work and then I have to fly to Phoenix and back and start that dumb nightmare. Right, right. Oh, I don't know. These are. It's all like I, I thought I was doing everything right, plotting and planning everything during dark weeks. And then all of a sudden it's all I messed right, up. Right, You thought there was one more dark week. It's, yes. Uh, I had to give up the Saturday at Flappers Claremont. And luckily, Augie, who was um, who was doing the opening spot, even though clearly it could headline whatever. Right? Yeah. He um, he closed and um, he, he had a, he said it was really fun. Didn't have to kick anyone out. Yeah. Um, oh wait, I forgot to. I didn't finish the Ben Glebe story. Oh right, it's it's on video. Okay. So this he does he tells a joke about Trump. Yeah. Uh, oh right. Okay. A woman yells out "Maga Maga." You can hear it on the tape. Oh he, my god. He doesn't hear First her. First of all, it should be pronounced "Maga," not "Maga." <laughs> and uh, well, she you could hear her. She's a little drunk, and um, and he doesn't hear. Her. You could see in his in his stance that he doesn't hear. And so he does. Uh, he does like one, the one or two jokes. He's like, does the he had done the setup. He was doing the punchline, and then she goes, "Don't make fun of the Donald." Yeah. Oh my God, the Donald! And it's like, oh yeah, that's right. The president's a reality show a person. He's not a politician or a public servant. He's mm-hmm. just a fucking knob job. And uh, and she um, and she goes, "Don't make fun of the Donald." And then he just lays in. It's like, why not? It's America, right? Still America. And then he. Uh, to quote Steve Hofstetter, I think he destroys her. <laughs> and um, Steve Hofstetter describing. <laughs> Listen, that dude's is a genius. He is a he's a marketing genius. He is. He genuinely all, is. All respect for all hail Steve Hofstetter's marketing <laughs> genius. <laughs> but he, I love I how he, he definitely gives like him. Comedian to pay destroys others Heckler, but he yes. doesn't put his name in it. It just be anonymous, so people are like, "What?" And then it turns out to be him. I yeah. mean, that's actually pretty smart. Okay. I, of course, uh, uh, All right. but again, again, so he destroys. So Ben Glebe, Ben Glebe her. does a really nice job, and right. then uh, it's the the tape itself is probably the video itself because I think he got either his college humor people or the comedy juice people. Oh, they put it on college humor. I think so. Oh shit! And and then they interview him a little bit because afterwards he's selling merch or doing meet and greet after, yeah. right? And um, this guy comes up to him and says. Hey, you really shouldn't make fun of him around here. And he goes, "Well, I get to though." Oh, and, yes. And the guy goes, "Well, you could end up with a bullet in the back of your head." And he's like, "You think?" And the guy goes, "I'm serious." He goes, "Well, if that happens, I guess that's I will have died for something I believe in." What the And fuck? the guy's like, "No, I'm not kidding." And he goes, "Uh-huh, neither am I." And he said, "I was terrified, but I'm not going to I'm not going to take Where this was shit. he? He was outside of Chicago. I don't know if it was a Zanies or if it was oh my a, God. a levity or if it was an improv or what it was. Wow. Yeah. 
Wow. But the video's out there. You should definitely see it. Oh, it was a thing of beauty, quite honestly. Wow. Yeah. And that's it was admirable. terrifying. It was terrifying. I don't understand why no one standing next to him said, I'm sorry. Uh, can I dial the police now? Is that what you did? You want to talk to the did police? He, now, he said, did Ben sell merch to that guy? <laughs> I mean, how good is it? That is the real question. <laughs> did that guy buy a shirt? <laughs> and said, hey, are we at uh, Comic of the Week time? Sure. Do you want to do Comic of the Week? So Maria sent me video, and I know I've met her, but I don't remember. Natalie Holmes? Her name is Natalie Holmes with an H. N-A-T-H-A-L-I-E-H-O-L-M-E-S. Yes. Is it Natalie Holmes on? It is Pretty Funny Nat. Pretty Funny Nat? Or pretty Funny Nat, yeah. Pretty Funny Nat. N-A-T. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, watch the video. It was, a, and it was a, it was actually a really good video of a. Sh- have you ever done that Golden Hour show? I think I have. Yeah. It's, uh, it's a. It, I don't remember the backdrop that she's standing in front of. It's like a, it's graffiti mural. Oh, okay. It's a beautiful mural, and um, and I think it changes. Oh, okay. Because it's in hipster land, and um, but it's actually a really good show. I've done it. And, yeah. And I it's have, weird because no, it's outside. It. Yeah. You know, have you ever done the taco? I've done a lot of outside shows. A lot of outside, like people's backyards. No, like I, there's one in Silver in Frogtown, maybe. But that's I've done. I've done some back. I, I, I've okay. done some outside stuff in Frogtown. Yeah. Um, maybe people are just living outside in Frogtown. I think that might be just the way they live in Frogtown. And <laughs> that's where you can pick up triangle sets, in Los Angeles. You can just uh, pick up sets by start working the room. Um, oh, there's. Did you know there's a podcast called Come Town? C-U-M? Yes. And it's a couple of New York comics, a, a couple of guy comics. And yeah. they kind of did it as a joke, mm-hmm. but it got incredibly popular instantly. Why do you think that happened? Why, why, why do you think people started listening? I don't know. It, it might could have been the name, the name Come Town. Town. <laughs> um, we severely made a huge error when we named our <laughs> show the Jackie and Lori Snatch show. Snatch Town. We're changing it. <laughs> Snatch Town, you guys. Snatchville. Oh, you yes, like a Ville, do Snatchville, you? Snatchville, exactly. Snatchville actually does roll up. It sounds like... It right. does! <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, Kyle Clark, I was going to say, it sounds like a in via in France that was uh, invaded yeah, by the Germans. It also sounds like that. <laughs> Snatchville. <laughs> um, but uh, they and their Patreon, they're making like 30000 a month or something. Wow. It's crazy. Each? I think the thing is grabbing okay, thirty. Yeah. Maybe they have to. That'd be fifteen. Turns out I could live on fifteen a month uh, in uh, Patreon cash. Yeah, it's. Uh, anyway, I, I just and and um, uh, and and guys, we fucked as all, it also uh, doing very very well. <laughs> I'm just saying. We, we should have done the Snatchville. Boat. Yeah, we should. We could. You know, we could put it as a subtitle. Would yeah, that help? That could be the, the title. Jackie and Laurie show subtitled Snatchville. Sure. All right. Make no. a note of it. No. Oh, wait a minute. What? Did it just get vetoed? What just happened? It's French. You love the French. <laughs> no, we could, we could call this episode Snatchville. I don't want to. You know I what? don't want to explain. <laughs> <laughs> and not even for fifteen grand a month. No. No. <laughs> Where is now? We're just negotiating as uh, at, at WH Fields. Uh, I just think it's uh, uh, kind of Fields. amazing because those guys were like, it's only a couple months old. Come down. Oh, really? And they're making. Oh, is it really? Yeah. I thought okay. it was just a couple months old. So it, like, blew up. In the last. Recently. Uh, yeah. Oh, so the, the origin story <laughs> was wrong. That was told to me. Why right. did it blow up? Just. The guy who is like the lead on it, the McMullen. Yeah. Is it a pr- the pressure of the, the stroke? He's like kind of a weird, like, he's like a stand-up stand-up. Just like oh, okay. Not mess of a person. But yeah. But like naturally really funny. Yeah. And just have like the two idiots who hang out with him. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my God. Uh, as I'm just so monologuing, oh, I don't like this. I think this is the first time we've done this. But I feel like it's one of those things like if you're trying to fill that Opie and Anthony hole yeah. or that kind of like that post Patrice and Geraldo kind of hole in New York, it feels like it's kind of that kind of thing. There's uh, a there's a market for that, man. Yeah. That's cool. All right. Well, I don't know. I'm not going to listen. I had lunch with my nephew, and, and he was telling me about all the podcasts he listens to. And he he likes to listen to, he's 
a 22-year-old nerd. And yeah. so he loves like a history podcast. And he was telling me uh, to go see movies and books. And he, yeah, I was like, <laughs> dude, you're a lot smarter than I am. I can't face it. But I'm, I'm happy to tell you he does not listen to Come Town. And, or if he did, uh, I don't have to hear it. I did talk to my dad the other day. Uh, yesterday, actually, and he was telling me about some new woman that he's uh, interested he's, in dating. Your dad is Come Town's comic of the week this week. Uh, yes, Elliot Cation, Come Town's comic of the week. <laughs> <laughs> he would love that, uh, but uh, <laughs> you don't. You're angry. <laughs> no, no, because he told. Well, he was talking about it, and I said, "Hey, did I tell you what happened at the abortion clinic gig I did last week?" And he was like, "That's right. It was an abortion clinic." And I said, "Yeah, there were some protesters in front. Uh, one of the days, just three old." white dudes mm -hmm. and he goes that's because they're paid and i was like dad there's no money in paying any no of these one's paying people. these people and uh, although some uh, republican supporters are being found on craigslist like people are finding ads for them in some places where you're like this is a lot of more people than i thought would be here some of them are being found oh, on craigslist and like there's ads something. on craigslist yeah yeah well and i so i told him what i said to one of the protesters who tried to fly on me which was a very uh, basic dick joke I said and I said to my, I said to my dad I the guy tried to fire me and I said hey when you let me legislate what hand you jerk off with then I'll talk to you mm -hmm. and dead silence from my father I finally shut my dad up and then I said sorry for the graphic nature but you keep telling me about women listen fathers should not laugh at their daughter's masturbation jokes no and uh, daughters shouldn't have to listen to their father's sexual antics no you you guys are both wrong yep you're both <laughs> <laughs> You're both and he doesn't wrong. go into sexual antics, but he goes into like the hitting on sitch, and I'm like, dude, too much. The um, New York Comedy Festival released its lineup. It's nearly it? almost all male lineup. I the think New two York out of eighteen. Festival. And is it Tiffany Haddish? And no, no, no. It's Hannah Gadsby. <laughs> <laughs> but the interesting thing, I didn't know. Um, one of the comics, and but, mm -hmm. but one of the women comics, you didn't know her. No. Oh. Um, but here's my point is like they are paying. First of all, that's not an acceptable ratio. No, no. Second of all, I'm going to go out on a limb and say that that ratio. They blows. have a lot of big male headliners that they're paying a lot of money to. Yep. And the the two female comics and I'm going to, you know, are uh, probably making less than Mark Maron, etc. Like yeah. those there it's famous male comics and some that are on their the female comics are on their way up. Let me, oh, the two, you know what the I mean? two women are on yes, their way yes. up. Yes. It's not a Maria Bamford or a Hannah Gadsby who would actually be like You'd have to equal pay for. in in monetary weight. Yeah. You know what I mean? Which is a which is a thing. Mm hmm You know? Oh, it's a real thing. There's two problems. Not enough women and not enough uh, uh, at the same heavy, level. Yeah, at the same level headliners. You know so what they, I mean? So they can even pay the women less and it makes sense. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And you're like, so it's uh, how many comics are at in the New York Comedy well, Festival? It, the, I think Bonnie McFarlane tweeted it was like two out of 18. We're, we're part of their advertised big, you know, right big at the thing. big sort of. And like the big tent ones. And then maybe there's like shows that'll have female comics doing spots and stuff like sure. that. Spotlets. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, you know, the, the big names are advertising are. Comedians 80 have to be at home with the babies. 85% so male. Hard. Yeah. yeah, that's insane. It's so dumb. Why, why is that still happening? That happened at South by Southwest like four or five years ago. There was yeah. like this insane lineup of 40 comics. And 29 guys. I think I'm there was not one where it wasn't even one. No, it was maybe before that. Maybe their correction oh, that was, let's was add Tig. Tig. Well, let's because the, one year, person. the year that there was Tig, uh, there was a big article about it. And yeah. I got a call moments later. Oh, that's right. Yeah. And they asked me to come. And I was like, why don't you just book me next year? I'm actually, it would be really expensive to bring me in for one show and it was just for publicity. It was wow. literally just a publicity show. And then I ended up doing it and living to this day in tiny regret. Because uh, the f thing is, is they're like, look, it's a Parna and Jackie. And it was me, her, and I think three or four other comics. Yeah. Because they went with, and they had to fly a Parna in. They had to fly me in. They had to do all these things. So. Well, New York doesn't have to fly anybody in. I mean, nope. half the big female headliners live there. Yeah. There's a boatload of female headliners who already live there. Yeah. It's not like Ophira Eisenberg is going to be real hard to get to. Here's the thing. Like, wh why don't people notice that shit? Why does it have to take social media for people to go, whoa, why doesn't the person booking it notice 
wow, this ratio is off. We got to fix this before we start making gifts and flyers and stuff like that, you know? You know, I'm working on a bit about how the learning curve right now is steeper for some reason. Uh, like the reveals, because of social media, like every everything that's obvious to you and I in, yeah. a, in a social injustice of women right. is, is, can be pointed out. And decent, let's say decent straight white dudes can go, oh shit, I didn't notice. Because you don't God. notice, you're in your own fishbowl, right? Right. But remember there was like this uh, meeting of showrunners in LA, or in Hollywood showrunners? Yeah. And it was, uh, it was like, it wasn't a WGA thing, but it was maybe... I forget. It was like a like a big academy was sponsoring it. Okay. All guys, all guys, and just all on the panel, just all yeah, dudes. Total panels. And and I, as soon as I read the panel, I'm like, wow, that's all guys. Like that's the first thing I noticed yeah. was it was all male, and some some women started pointing it out on Twitter, and then all of a sudden they, they were like, oh, it's come to our attention that you know yeah. it's like. Wait, you didn't notice that when you were only calling dudes and only writing dude <laughs> names, it didn't occur right. to you that right. it was all dudes? That's it's the fucking first thing I noticed. That's because you are a lady person. But why does why you don't have to be a lady to notice well, the thing that is, it's is, all men. Except that you literally it's that's what I'm talking about with the learning curve. It's like I have I have always thought of myself as a giant hippie liberal, right? And uh, but when things are pointed out to me about injustice with people of color, right, I will have a thing where I'm like, oh, shit. Uh, yeah. And I will not have noticed it. Right. Right. Yes. And yes. for example, I rented a car today. It hurts. Right. The woman I rented it from she was named Jasmine. And for some reason, we started talking and she said, oh, I'm a comic. And I said, oh, I'm a you're a comic. I'm Jackie. Wait, she brought it at first. Yeah. It came up that she was a stand up comic. Oh. And because uh, I just said something about Hollywood and being in the entertainment industry. Oh, okay. She goes, oh, I'm a comic. And I said, I'm a comic. And then we started talking. It turns out she's not a comic. She's a storyteller. Okay. And I said, uh, thank well, you. Thank you for making that distinction. Well, that no nuanced. And uh, I did say that she could email me and I would find her because she said that she had done storytelling nights at Flappers, Improv and um, Ice House. Right. Which is, I think, why she thought of it as a stand-up kind sure, of thing, sure. right? And I said, well, there's a bunch of other things. Anyway, so she, uh, it's a black woman mm -hmm. and she was, uh, she ended up, she told me that one of the stories she was talking about was how she has a son. She's married, has a boy, he's like 10 years old, and mm -hmm. they go to, he goes to a private school. Mm -hmm. And uh, she's a black woman. Mm -hmm. And there was a potluck and she said, Everybody kept saying to her, "You don't have to bring anything." We know what? that you're. We know that you're a young mother. They assumed she was a single mother. They assumed that her kid was there on a scholarship, and they and she goes and they assumed that I could not afford a box of Capri Suns. Wow! I have a Costco membership. It's all going to work out. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, "Holy shit!" And she said, "And they thought they were being nice." And I was like, "Did you say to them, what what made you think that?" She said, he is the only black kid in the school. Oh, my God. And I was like, that is brutal. That would worry me. If I, I mean, I, I, because these people thought they were being nice. Right, right, right. When I, when my son was, uh, was, uh, going to, he was attending a, a dual immersion, Spanish yeah. dual in Glendale. And I think on that, like, there's like an information day or a get to know the school day before, you know, the school started. And there was a woman who's an executive, a TV executive, who's African-American, and she has two kids, two twin boys that are the same age as my son. Okay. And she um, didn't enroll them in that school because they would have been the only black kids in the class. Yeah. And she just didn't want that. Yeah. And I, and I was like, yeah, I could see that. They ended up going to the Lisee, the French Lisee. So okay. they're dual, but they're just different language. But, yeah. I mean, it, you know, it's... Uh, yes. Pain it's, in the ass. It's, it's just a, it's, it's, an it's extra, water that you don't have. It's another level, extra thing to worry about that we don't have to think about because right. we're white ladies, right. and dudes don't have to think about because they're dudes. Mm -hmm. And but now everybody has to think about it because of social media, and you're just like, "Hello, you." There are 18 comics, and 17 of them are males, and they're all white, and they're all dumb. But I'm sure the, the, there's plenty of black guys too, right? What do you mean? The in the New York, no, in the no, New York the, comedy festival. Yeah, yes. Like it, it's, it's probably a, a good diverse. Yes, but not, it's a broad spectrum of melanin, and yet uh, all dangle genders. Yeah. All right. 
dangle genders. That's what <laughs> I like to... Is that, is that... Did you make that up? I don't think so. I don't know where I heard that. Oh, but uh, And great. I would like to apologize to whoever I stole that from. It's yours. If you, if you did make it up, that's fucking genius. I know. Would have been great. Hmm. A lot of silence right there. Hey, where are we at? 43. 43. Hmm. Another 17 minutes. So this week I'm in L.A., we're doing the live tomorrow. Is it at is it at eight or is it at five? It's at five. Five p.m. tomorrow. Come to Flappers. And Otherwise, then this weekend I'll be at Stir Crazy in Glendale, Arizona. Thursday, Friday, Saturday. And you know what? I'm fucking busting my ass to get there. For several, it's costing me a lot of money to do these shows. Right. So I, please show up if you're near Phoenix. Tomorrow I'm going, and it'll be over. But I'm going to Salt Lake City tomorrow. Oh. And I'm doing Wise Guys. And that'll be super fun because I haven't done stand up in like seven days. And mm. uh, talk are you about doing a, a uh, are you doing a set tonight? No, because mm. I leave tomorrow. Yeah, and you got to spend the only time. day I'm at home. Right. So um, then I but then next week uh, this this will go up. I'm doing all L- L.A. sets and then in the live Jackie Laurie. And then the following week, I'm doing a bunch of Colorado stuff. I'm doing the High Plains a comedy festival in Denver. Plus, I'm doing a, a one nighter before and a one nighter after. Once in a, one in Fort Collins, one in Boulder. That sounds fun. It's Boulder. Gonna, yeah. Oh you my love god. Boulder, right. I, I've only done. I did a gig there once, a triple run there once, and I was like, this place is heaven. Right. It feels. It, it, it's one of those. It's, it's so Boulder, beautiful. Colorado, is the kind of place where you look at people and you judge how you feel inside, how they look on their outside. Oh, they're all good looking. They're all good looking, and they all look happy. And you're like. Not, I'd be the, not the Ramsey family, here. but everybody else. John Bonet? Yeah. Are they from Boulder? Yeah. That's where it happened. <laughs> My favorite murder. Not, they don't look hey. happy. <laughs> hey, what do you think about this? Uh, this could be our gimmick. In addition to Snatchville, we could do, um, we could come up with comedians doing crimes. And then you could tell a story, like the dollop, you would tell a story of your favorite comic, like Vince Champ is your favorite comic who uh, did crimes, and then right. I'll come up with a comic who did crimes. Mine will be John DeBoer. Uh, and then, John DeBoer? No, John DeBoer is actually a good guy. I don't know why. Uh, hi, John. I'm so sorry. It's <laughs> DeVore, it's and he's DeBoer. not a criminal. It's D-E-V-O-R-E? De- no. That's a different man. Okay. But sure, John DeVore, criminal. Uh, no! John DeVore, not a... Uh, he's a friend of mine. He's okay. A, he's a comic friend of mine. Do you know him? God damn it! <laughs> <laughs> that was, again, fun for me. So, uh, Colorado, good times. Uh, I'm looking... I'm really looking forward to, to Salt Lake and doing four long sets. Yeah. And trying to get those big chunks into something Are you uh, bringing tighter. merch? I, yeah, I just got delivered new meat shield pins and new spooky pins. So 100 of each. Cool. I, I sold uh, or I got rid of. Did you bring Jackie and Lori T-shirts? T-shirts? No, I don't have any T-shirts. Oh, they're in, the, they're in my closet. You wanted them. Oh, so I don't. Uh, that's why I don't have them because you yeah, have them. Do you want them? Are you they the ones that you gave deem away? unacceptable? Uh, the ones I deem unacceptable. Why would I? We were going to bring them to Montreal. Why don't we away. give them to the temporary aid shelter here in Burbank? Do Why we, don't we send them to Africa and have them because wear them with their Because there's one that's two blocks Cavaliers. away from here. Well, um, okay. Right. Well, if you're going to give them away, I mean, there's people that need shirts. That's all I'm saying. Oh, yeah. Fair oh, I, I went there. Uh, the only reason they're on my mind, I went there yesterday with a ton of shampoos and conditioners and soaps that I've been yeah, yeah. culling, stealing from hotels. Hilton loves to donate that stuff. I've yeah. got a, I, I give it to the runaway shelter by my house. Yeah. Did you give a, a big, big couple of big bags? Um, I had uh, I had a... Uh, half of a, a paper uh, sh- uh, grocery shopping bag. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. But the people working there are like really elderly. It just feels like everyone's working really harder than they need to. Be. They should be for their age. Yeah. And then, then, um, you know, there's like a mom there with two kids and I'm like, Oh God, <laughs> this what's, uh, what's America uh, hurts. <laughs> oh, America country hurts. I ended up with my mother-in-law, uh, my stepmom in law, uh, watching, 11 episodes of a mm-hmm. show on ABC that I found out at the end of season one. We watched the whole first season. Not picked up. Oh, my God. <laughs> I, oh, what did you invest that time for? That's so thing. furious. Oh, awful. And, uh, and I never get to watch television, right? Right. Because I don't. Uh, I could make time. But it yeah. was called, it's a great science fiction. It was a great science fiction series. Of course, ABC canceled it. It was called The Crossing. Did you oh, ever heard about that? that? It was about uh, people from the future, and it was super depressing, but also really dark and funny. 
but it was so, but if you thought about it too much you'd be super depressed <laughs> and uh but i i thought it was great and uh a lot of normal looking actors hmm. like normal looking people acting which was awesome and at least three dark haired beautiful women that i was like who died who was that that died? Which one died? I, I can't tell them apart. Oh, oh, right. Because uh, they all look kind of the same. Because there was one woman, but they didn't. I mean, someone who can tell the difference between human faces. Yeah. There was the woman who played the head of uh, Homeland Security at the camp. There was the woman who uh, was the Terminator kind of apex uh, killing machine lady. And then there was... Um, Jackie, this show is canceled, and you're roping How? new people into it? So good, you guys. <laughs> don't, it's don't like Firefly. Sorry you went down that path, but don't drag the rest of us. You guys, if there's a way to see the crossing, someone talk to me about it. Don't. <laughs> it's just Fran and I sitting there watching it. She's like, you want to watch another one? I'm like, yeah, yeah. I Four remember so tonight for three nights. Oh man, I watched The Americans with my dad. He was not able to follow. Like he could, he didn't know. Um, he couldn't follow the. He could when they changed. We were changing wigs. He thought they were new characters. He was oh. like deep in the cancer at this oh, point. Right, had right. radiation, yeah, yeah. so he wasn't following. It. But he's just hanging out. He yeah. enjoyed it. Yeah. I'm I'm still finishing my second run through the Americans. It's Aww. so fucking good. That's what I hear. Yeah. Is it over or is it still ongoing? It's, it's finished. So it now finished. now I know the outcome. I'm I'm like looking for how they set it up because I think they knew when they started how it would end. I hope so. And it's kind of fun to see. Ever since Lost, the I characters think that they've been trying to fix keep that, revealing themselves. That is awesome. Did you ever see Home Lamb? Which is no. a Sesame Street parody of Homeland. No, I didn't. It is about a, she a wolf in sheep's clothing who tries to infiltrate a herd oh. of sheep. It is adorable and hilarious. Home lamb on the Sesame Street channel on YouTube. When <laughs> I was selling my books on yeah. Sunday night. <gasps> yeah, yeah, you brought merch? Oh, there's a Sunday show. Oh, is there? It, it was good. I normally feel that there... Where were you, stir crazy? <sighs> No, no, you were at, go, at bananas. go bananas. I'm gonna I'm, be a stir crazy. You're, you're gonna be a stir crazy. But um, you know, it's an extra day. You know, yeah. After Saturday, you feel like, all right, I killed. Let me get out of here. Yep. <laughs> There's it's no just, need to linger. It's casual day. Yeah. Is what it is. <laughs> like I'm leaving with a with a good reputation. Yeah. Sunday could ruin it. But Sunday was <laughs> it was fine. It was fine. Good. But this guy, as I'm selling books and stuff, he goes, he, he was middle aged guy, white guy. Mm -hmm. I just want to tell you, you got the best b b b b breasts I've ever seen. And you could tell he stumbled because he was he thought was of it and was rehearsing it and got nervous. And then he just walked away. And I, I would have said something, but I was in the middle of a sale. <laughs> <laughs> so I said, thank you. <laughs> do, do you think he left going, that's how you flirt? Is that the definition of flirting? You're like, I don't right. know. I really don't know. I mean, how could you know that that guy? That's an out of touch guy who's never going to get in touch. Right. You know, right. But he's well, never dad, going to touch my breasts. The, the, uh, well, and the thing, the it's like because I'm, I'm working on that bit about flirting, mm -hmm. and I and I and I'm going to work on it this weekend. But I was like, the whole thing about how my dad is actually quite good at it. My father would never say to a woman, "Hey, that's yeah. a nice set of boobs you got going," on, or whatever. Yeah, right? as, as I'm talking to people and he's walking out, yeah. you know, it was just like. Just a weird fucking you? thing to do. Yeah. That's just weird. I, I get the feeling because I, if I can say, crushed so hard. Yes. That you can. he couldn't take it that oh. a woman crushed. And he had to do something to, to establish uh, the equilibrium again. Yeah. Fuck that guy. Yeah. Yeah. No one will. No one will. Not now. Not ever. Just your words. It's, uh, where are we at? <laughs> Seriously. 52. I don't know if I have eight minutes left in me. Well, you know, we've been going over lately. <laughs> so that's what the guy who's keeping the chart. I don't think we could go under, but I think we can stop exactly. Oh, yeah. That's your favorite. Um, I have visitors. I have my cousins oh, yeah. coming next week, and then my sister's coming stay the in week this room? after. Yeah, but we'll be at Flappers next week, so it's okay. Oh. But I was going to use this back wall right here where, yeah. the, where the fake Monet is yeah. to uh, put up my... You figure board? out a headline set that I, I will use to make a new, you know, like a new CD. I need to check out real quick and yes. check into my Southwest flight before I'm a C. So. so we're during the podcast. Let me just narrate. Jackie is checking into her flight. A31. A31. I did it. You'll get both your bags on the flight. That's good. Yeah. It's uh, no, I always check. Yeah. I, uh, 
That was a necessary break. I understand. And, uh, if you fly Southwest, everyone understands what the hell I'm doing. Because I did not pay for early bird. Yeah. And, uh, why should you? And it's because it's only an hour and 40 minute flight from LA, from Burbank to uh, Salt Lake. Yeah. And I thought, even if I'm in C, in a middle seat, less than two hours, I can handle it. Yeah, you can handle but it. But now, I'm going to get an exit row. It's all going to work out. <laughs> I was... Uh, Saddled with my son, he, who threw his leg over, like he couldn't bend his. It was. Oh, a, that's right. Did you? You couldn't get a bulkhead. No, because we're exit. We can't do exit because he's too young and right. he's, he he can't help anybody. Right. And uh, no, it was all sold out. The Cincy, the LAX Cincy right. flight is like sold too, out yeah. nonstop. They're sold out, and uh, so. He just threw his leg over me. So that was four hours of a leg four on me. Four hours of a leg on you. And, and this foot was kind of bleeding over into the A aisle seat. But the lady was short and she didn't mind. She didn't care. I offered to buy her drinks and she didn't want any. <laughs> That's my favorite is when we inconvenience a sober alcoholic. Like they won't, have, they won't take anything. <laughs> She's like, can I buy you something? What about this? <laughs> no, I'm, are... I'm abstinent. Okay, uh, fine. Wh what about... I tried. What about... Uh, Etsy, anything? Maybe a dream catcher? <laughs> uh, Did you get you? You have a week at um, um, the Vegas Cellar, right? No, I did not. Okay. I've yet to. Things happen with the family, and I had to. Sure, I sure, bailed sure, sure. on any number of things, and I forgot to bring my laptop oh. up to Central California. Um, their their neighbor is such a nice uh, neighbor. Yeah, that is helping the moms. Are they on like an acre of land? Like, they're on they... like a boatload of land. Really? And, yeah, yeah. It's, do they uh, have a farm or anything? They have do they two have... dogs and a cat. Who, by the way, feeding the dogs and cat reminded me of childcare. I used to do a lot of childcare in the '90s and early uh, 2000s as a, as a day job. Mm -hmm. And um, when you make pancakes for a little kid. And you put it in front of them, and then you have to hear this. That's not how mom does it. <laughs> That's how those dogs were looking at me when I really? uh, mixed their stupid meal together. And I and I said the same thing I said to the dogs, uh, to the children, which was, and yet, edible. Why don't you get on there? <laughs> and uh, it doesn't look like Mickey Mouse. It looks dumb. Just eat <laughs> the pancake. Just eat the dog food. Um, yeah, So, but their neighbor, uh, Trump supporter. Yeah. And uh, he was Trump uh, Nightingale. And because uh, uh, he's uh, nice guy, but a Trump supporter. Yeah. Dirtbag. Uh, Dirtbag. Dirtbag or a nice dirt guy. Dirtbag who takes out their their garbage cans and oh. and is willing to be Wait, there for them. And he knows they're gay. Yeah. And he's still. Yep. How can people. I don't understand. He's, oh, please. He, I live with one. Right. Do he I doesn't. Know? He like literally for some reason, there's some disconnect. There's a huge disconnect. She they don't get all the news we get or they think it's lies. Yeah. You know, but I there's I had a huge fight with my mom about she's still not recanting her Trump vote. You oh, know, she isn't. yeah. Oh, fuck. and she thinks uh, everything I say isn't true. You know, wow. Yeah. Well, that's I we mean, the just thing like is, listing all the things that are happening. Oh, oh, that's not there. Kavanaugh is going to, you know, probably try to uh, end Roe v. Wade. No, he would never. Yeah, he that's would. That's what He's he does. actually said. He wants to do that. Yeah. That out loud out of his fucking asshole pie hole. Legalize a, or protect AR-15s. I mean, it's a nightmare. It's it's pretty bad. I kind of want to get shot so that my mom will know I am that she was wrong. Where is but the she good might not guy with a gun <laughs> that we've heard so much about? He's got to be somewhere, right? He's running. <laughs> He's running. He's running away. He's decided to move to the Yukon. <laughs> and because uh, it's... How much time? Oh, we got to be at like a couple... Of, 57. 57. Oh, so what do you got coming up? So this week is... I told you. I know it, but what's after that? <laughs> what's the long plan? <laughs> I have yet to hear from Audible, by the way, about my chapter. Mm. Nothing. How much time are it's they supposed 10 to? ten pages. <laughs> oh, yeah. But, you know, someone's got to sit and do notes. That's a couple hours of work. Oh, right now. Um, uh, Anytime now. I am... Um, my cartoonist, the guy that was animate, going to animate yeah. President Hillary Clinton, got a job on, or got a show on the Cartoon Network. So oh, now... Now you got to find a new artist? Yeah. Uh, I got the pencils back for my comic book. What? For the, uh, I have a comic book coming out with yeah. the Starburns or oh neat the Harmon yeah guy one, and uh, I got they found an artist and they uh, sent me the pencils. What's the pencils? The pencils is ju uh, not colored. Oh okay. Yeah, just essentially the drawings. Oh neat of of the of the eight pages because it's a short right. It's real cool. short. And uh, it's really cool looking. Wow. It's super cool looking. And then um, 
And then, uh, well, all they need is they need, you know, ink and and a letterer, and uh, and then hopefully it'll it'll get made. Hmm. I mean, if it doesn't, that'd be really weird. A lot of people put in some work. <sighs> and, Our uh, futures. Yeah, and then I, and I have the, nothing going on really. Uh, well, I don't know. You just you, you get a lot of work, and then you. I, it's weird though when you do something like at the gala, and you're like, well, now what? And you got to yeah, work on I the mean, next thing. You know, like the summer of a lot of traveling is almost done. Yep. Right. I have one little hell week next week, which wasn't yeah. supposed to be. I was supposed to be. I was going to drive out there. Yeah. Jackie, Jackie be. Fabulous is like, oh, I love that drive. And I'm like, yeah, oh, you yeah. know what? I'm going to drive. And then I find out, no, I'm taking four plane trips <laughs> in four day in, in three days. Yeah, that seems profitable. It's uh, good. Yeah, I know. Now but, what? Well, why don't you write some uh, some jokes and do some stand-up comedy and enjoy oh, that? Fuck you. Why? There we go. Leave on that. Bye. <laughs> now leaving nerdist.com.